Good afternoon everybody, Red Sox Collector Dan McGraw here, coming at you with my second video of the day. Uh, this is one I've talked about doing for quite a while now, and I spent some extra time yesterday um, getting everything labeled and organized and put back on the shelf. Um, this is my binder video. Now I see a lot of other collectors who do some really cool videos with binders about their, their sets or their individual cards or player collections or team collections or... Hall of Fame collections, what, whatever it may be. And uh, I've always had this rack in here. Uh, I never thought that I would fill this rack with binders. But I have. I've managed to, and I actually have 2020 sitting on the floor underneath. So this is the front view. Now I have this uh, glass display case in front of it, so I can't... Uh, I'm going to do a pause it and go to the side view so you can see the remainder of it, just to see the, the size of it. Now there's 14 binders on each shelf, it's four shelves, and like I mentioned, there's one on the floor. Now all this is, is basically base and parallel cards from 1949 to 2020. Now I don't have any insert cards in here, I don't have any autographs, relics, any of that stuff. This is just base and parallel cards and oddball cards, mostly stuff from the 80s and things like that. Now for the most part, um, most years from 1999, or rather 2000 to 2019, I'll have multiple books, usually two. I don't think I've spilled into a third binder on any years. Um, I also have up here my 2007 and 2008 Moments and Milestones cards, which currently I did a split on the 2007s yesterday into a second binder because it was really starting to, uh, start to bunch up and I didn't like the way that it was, uh, it, was, uh, it wasn't laying, it was standing, but I didn't like the way it looked. You'd grab it out of there and it was almost accordion style. It was really starting to, uh, to kind of go outside the uh, parameters of what I like. So this is just a view. Now I'm going to go ahead and jump in here as I've got my phone up on my tripod. And uh, I apologize because I can't see myself on the other side of this. So basically starts from 1949 to 1969. This is Bowman and Topps. This book is Tops 1970 through 1979. This is strictly Tops and Opeachy. Then this next book is from 1970 to 1982. The 70s is all oddball cards, and the 1980, uh, 81, and 82 are all regular issue and oddball cards. And then we have a book that's from 1983 to 1986. Simply, I'm able to put four years in there because there weren't as many cards produced. Uh, then the next book is 1987 and 88. And then beyond that, I just split my 8990 book yesterday because that one was kind of busting out at the seams as well. So we have 89, 90, 91. Top shelf goes through 97. We have 98, 99, all single books for each year. And then starting in 2000, I have multiple books. And then um, I have one book here. This was a set that I showed off on a video a couple of months ago. It was a 2004 Bowman Uncirculated set. Uh, they're all encased in holders, and they fit very nicely into four pocket top loaders, which I put in there and then I subsequently stapled the tops of them to keep them from falling out. So it actually fills up a binder with a 22 card team set. And then the bottom next shelf down is from 2006 to 2011. And the bottom bottom shelf is 2012 through 2019. And again, I have 2020 on the bottom. So that is how I store all of my base oddball and parallel cards. They're all by year. When I did my want list, and I haven't done all of them, but I have done probably about 80% of them now, um, I basically reorganized the booklets in the order of the want list so things are easier to find as I'm putting them away. Um, it's not a perfect system, but it is uh, the way that I choose to do it. So I have 57 albums of just those cards. Now, if this is something you're interested in doing for your collection and you have the a similar amount of cards or the need for a similar amount of albums, you're going to need two things. You're going to need some money because this is not cheap. <laughs> uh, this is over the past, I would say this is going back 20 years to when I used to be a set collector and had a lot of my sets and binders. I had sold all of them, took them out of the albums and binders and just set the binders aside. So unfortunately there is a little mismatching there i can only get typically the blue ultra pro binders at my hobby shop now they only had the black ones for a little while so that's why you see some of the black ones in there you probably can't even tell from this view 
But uh, that's how I store my stuff. And uh, 57 albums. Right now they're running about eight ninety five a book. I would say the average price that I've probably paid for these over the years was probably between six fifty and seven dollars a piece. So if we say seven dollars a piece, that's just under four hundred dollars just for the albums. Now each album probably has, I'm guessing, anywhere from sixty to eighty pages per album. So if you multiply that number times fifty seven binders you're looking at probably about 4,000 pages, which is 40 boxes of Ultra Pros, which probably I've averaged paying somewhere around $15 a box for. So that's another $600. So you're $1,000 average, I would say. Uh, that's going by an average price over the years of buying these. So it, it's very costly uh, to do this, but I've spread that cost out over, like I said, 20 years. So when you think about it that way, it's 50 bucks a year. Um, I would say definitely over the past five years, I've spent way more than $50 a year on uh, binders and pages. Um, I still actually have some pages. I have about 20 or 25 left. Um, and I've got a couple of Red Sox binders that I put some of my better players in that I'll be taking out and hopefully being able to reuse those pages as well. So I probably have another 100 to 120 pages there. Um, so it's definitely costly. This rack itself um, is probably roughly about three and a half feet wide and it's about five and a half to six feet tall. It work, they fit perfectly. Like I said, 14 per shelf. I prefer standing them up like this as opposed to laying them down. So this just works better for me. So that's how I store. That's my binder video. Uh, that's how I store my, again, it's base, oddball, and parallel cards only in those binders. I'm probably going to have to invest in another shelf. I have four, bi four binders which will soon be five of just insert cards. I used to keep all my insert cards in top loaders. Uh, again, I just ran out of room to, I like to display them or I like to be able to look at them quickly. So I ran out of room for that. I've started putting them in binders. It was easier to look through to figure out what I didn't have. Um, I did have them somewhat alphabetical for a while, but that has totally gone away. <laughs> But uh, those I just have laying on top of another case right now. So my goal is to get another small rack eventually um, to put beside it to start with my insert cards and things like that. So that's the, uh, again, the front view. And I'm just going to pause this real quick, move the camera, and get you a more of a side view. So if you bear with me for one second. And I am back. This is kind of a angled view so that you can see the bottom two shelves as well. So... You don't think I'm just uh, blowing smoke about the fact that I have 56 albums on this shelf. Um, I have them all tagged by year. And again, it makes it a lot easier to find them. And uh, as I add cards, I just pull them out and do it. So that is my binder video. I've been anxious to share that with people. I've been talking about it for a long time and finally got it done. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up. Com give me some comments down below um, if you like what you see. And hopefully I've inspired some other people to... Uh, expand their collections into binders. All right, that's all I got for now. And as always, take care.